private debt is piling into the North's property market as the price correction begins to slow. Does this mean the property market's long COVID is finally over? I'm David Tame, Analysis Editor at Place North. In today's Place podcast, we'll look at private debt's resurgence and what property they want to buy, and why it's not a brilliant time to make your big town centre plan dependent on supermarkets, and why it might be a brilliant time to refurbish or even drop dated city centre office blocks. Good news, we've hit the bottom. How do we know this? Because the sharks of private debt are moving in fast. It's not so much that they smell blood in the water, but they fear they won't smell blood in the water much longer. The repricing of commercial property assets underway since the COVID lockdowns began four years ago this month has reached a turning point. A flurry of deals and announcements this week show what's coming. These people, the private debt providers, they aren't fools. Inflation is working its way out of the system, interest rates will come down, the mood is improving and prices will rise. In the language of Aberdeen, or do we say Aberdeen, the rebasing of real estate sector valuations has stabilised leading to an attractive entry point, particularly for senior lenders. That's one way of saying it. DWS Group, who have about £700 billion under management, talk of interesting opportunities for investors in private debt. At the same time as this interest revives, a lot of the US office property market, where much of this money might otherwise have gone, looks distinctly vulnerable thanks to an oncoming wave of loan defaults. So they want to buy now. And what does this mean for new developments or those in need of refinancing? We can narrow this down fairly quickly. The first thing it means is lenders are rapidly closing deals for assets that will bounce back fastest, particularly in some sectors, and I mean city residential, and in some locations, and I mean Manchester and Leeds. So this week, ICG Real Estate agreed £100 million of debt to fund Salboy's 556 apartment scheme at the former Boddington's Brewery in Manchester. This is ICG Real Estate's second Manchester buy in 18 months, and the reckoning is that buying now locks them into Manchester's graduate-driven growth. And it's not a coincidence that Grosvenor, the Duke of Westminster property business, also chose this week to reveal an extra £900 million debt strategy for the residential sector, starting with a £120 million offering and including both the Leeds Build to Rent scheme and a lead student scheme in the £46 million opening transaction. The second thing this means is that, for the minute, the flood of new money into the market is dizzying. To pick a handful of examples, in the last few days we learned that pension scheme pool LGPS Central has allocated £200 million to an M&G investment debt fund. We also heard reports that New York-based Apollo Global Management It's launching a 1 billion euro, that's about 800 million pound fund, mixing its own resources with private capital in a bid to buy into European real estate. And Investec, always a name to watch, took the wraps off a new real estate equity strategy with the aim of finding a home for 250 million before 2026. Will this money go to beds and sheds as usual, or will office and retail get a look in? Aberdeen, or however we're pronouncing their name, are pretty gloomy about regional offices. But everyone's risk profile is different. And according to Investec, the answer for them at any rate is yes. They do want to spend money on new offices. It's a new business line that's already won funds from the UK and Channel Islands and Switzerland and South Africa. And it's angling for what they call off-market acquisition of highly sustainable regional offices in the first tranche of £150 million of investment. Uh, They reckon that rapid UK commercial real estate repricing offers an attractive entry point into the sector, and they're not wrong. Its first buy was in Guildford, though, the Surrey town, which maybe shows that their definition of regional is fairly loose. Non-performing loans are opportunities to restructure too, restructuring ways that really big institutional money may find helpful and appealing and where private debt can play a role. 
this is just as well. Bayes Business School says that around 40% of outstanding UK commercial property loans are due to mature this year and next. Invariably, wildly lower interest rates than the borrowers got originally. Distress is inevitable. The latest Bayes Commercial Lending Report is due very soon, early in April. And that will reveal how deep the distress is and how far private debt has a window of opportunity. This may not be the end of the on again, off again four years of the COVID commercial property market, but it's the beginning of the end, probably. And now your weekly rundown of what's going up and what's heading the other way in the Place North elevator. Doors closing, going down. Some stories never end. Thwaites announced that its Blackburn Town Centre brewery needed relocating in 2011. Talks with Sainsbury's about a supermarket on the site collapsed in 2014. Thwaites finally left in 2018. The site was cleared in 2020. And in 2021, Blackburn with Darwin Council signed up Maple Grove as their development partner. By 2022, in the glow of post-COVID recovery, everything looked promising. Morrisons, who was anchor the development, have now decided to stay put in their existing Blackburn store, meaning that the site can't be redeveloped for housing, which had been an important part of the town centre of regeneration jigsaw. Today, local politicians aren't agreed whether or not the Morrisons pullout is a fatal blow to the council's £250 million master plan, but it plainly isn't much help, and after two failed attempts to get a supermarket to anchor the site, maybe it's time for a rethink. The trouble is that supermarket development isn't really a thing at the moment. Volumes have fallen since the giddy post-pandemic days. Retailers' enthusiasm is for making the best use of existing floor space, not building new. And if new stores are needed, they tend to be convenience stores or mid-sized outlets for little and oldie. So not the big stores which the Thwaites site probably needs. Profitability isn't particularly good for any grocer at the moment, even the fast-growing discounters. And store openings are well down on the recent average. 150 new stores across the UK this year would be a strikingly strong performance. Apparently the maths didn't work for Morrisons. If the maths had worked, the maths might also have worked for investors. But although property investors love supermarkets, their interest has a lot to do with the supply being so limited. Rental growth has not been the lure. If town centre regeneration relies on supermarket deals to provide the rocket fuel, it's not going anywhere fast. How time flies. In 1996, when the 54,000 square foot Norfolk House office block was completed, Manchester was just waking up after several decades of economic torpor. And Norfolk House was one of half a dozen speculative new builds that reanimated the office market. This was prime, prime stock. But with the past part of 30 years separating then and now, Norfolk House has now got 39,000 square feet of vacant floor space and is on the market for upwards of 8.5 million at a yield so high it's not worth reporting. The building's history makes an interesting parable. First, it was super prime, with tenants including the government, Coote the Bankers and Zurich Insurance. The owners early on, TNS Stores, sold it to Warner Estates in 2003 for just short of 15 million. By 2008, the economy was in a tailspin and Warner had their problems. They were looking for 20 million to offload the building. That didn't quite work. They refurbished instead. And this is where things began to go wobbly as the building changes hands time and time again and the office market begins to change shape. More funky, less factory. M&G were owners for a while. They did some work on the block, then sold it to Deutsche Asset and Wealth Management in 2015 for just short of 17 million. And in 2019, Deutsche sold it to Knight Frank Investment Management for just over 19 million. These deals both reflected yields north of 6%. Now in 2024, the building's on the market for less than half what it was worth five years ago. It's not a brilliant market for offices just now. But that said, this is the kind of pricing that will provoke interest. Neighboring buildings are being refurbished and the capital value on this, about 157,000 square foot thereabouts, is great if you want to spend on doing the thing up. Get that price a shade lower 
and the plot rather than the building becomes the story, a bellwether worth watching as northern cities weigh up the future of their standing office stock. So that's it for this week. We've seen how private debts stampede into real estate might mean that the property market's long COVID is finally over. Our brewing up regeneration in Blackburn can't depend on supermarkets and why the time to drop older office blocks may be nearing. For more about the built environment in the north, visit placenorth.co.uk. I'm David Tain, and thank you for listening.